G'day! In this video, I'd like to discuss a crazy religious sect called the Manichees and how they eventually led St. Augustine to solve one of the greatest problems of human experience. What is evil and where does it come from? The usual solution to the problem of evil on offer was that of Gnosticism, which says we're living in a dualistic world with bad things that are material, which we have to escape from, and good things, which are spiritual, which we need to escape too. One of the problems of a radically dualistic Gnosticism is the problem of knowledge itself. Briefly put, if the whole material world were an illusion designed to trap and enslave us, we could never know this because our knowledge could never be totally unconnected from the world around us that we observe. Our mind itself will be part of the evil illusion. If we were ignorant of what was real, there would be no base on reality from which Gnostic teaching could offer us real knowledge to understand our predicament and how to escape from it. Now the smarter Gnostic thinkers were aware of this problem. There had to be some light in the world for people to at least have a chance of grasping the larger truth. For this reason, they posited that humans possessed sparks of illumination inside the soul, sparks which could produce a blazing fire of real knowledge that Gnostic teaching could stoke. To account for the existence of these sparks in the human soul, the Gnostics presented a good God, a God of light who struggled to reveal the truth of himself to humans. To explain the struggle itself, the good God, of course, needed an enemy, a foil, and that was the evil God, the God of darkness, who presided over the material order, the order that was designed to keep people enslaved to the body and its passions forever. Such was the view of the Manichees, a sect of Gnostics whose leader came originally from far away Persia, but whose teaching had gained something of a following in the Latin West. With their emphasis on good and evil, the God of light and darkness, and salvation as freedom from slavery to the flesh, they often appealed intellectually to the same types of people who would have been attracted to the authentic Christian gospel. In fact, the founder of the Manichees had claimed to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and was able to cite scriptural teaching where it suited him, but also the sacred writings of Hindus, Buddhists, Zoroastrians and others. He thus had the cachet of being a repository of the combined wisdom of all the great ancient religious traditions of the world. The Manichees had a worldview that was convincing enough that St. Augustine himself spent nine years with the sect before becoming a Christian. What on earth did Augustine see in this sect? Some of her doctrines were self-serving, such as the one that allowed low-level members, as yet unpurified from evil, to indulge with impunity in the sins of the flesh. Other doctrines were bizarre, such as the one that fruit cries when picked from fruit trees, and thus one ought never to pick apples. The fundamental appeal of the Manichees for Augustine seems to be in their fundamental idea that of the good God responsible for all particles of light trapped throughout the material world over and against an evil God, the author of all matter designed to trap and relegate to oblivion the elements of light. These two principles, the good God of light and the evil God of darkness, were at war with each other. And this cosmological battle explain the problem of evil, the world and the human condition. On the surface, it explained what we all see, that the world is full of good things like hot fudge sundaes and evil things like leprosy. 
Above all, it explained why Augustine, despite the most earnest desire of his heart, was not able to cease from the sin of fornication. His desire to break free of that sin was his own particles of light entrapped within an evil body that came from the god of darkness. The Manichaean cosmology was a sharply dualistic cosmology. The good God had no connection at all to evil things, and those came from the evil God. And boy, could we run down the list with the good God being in charge of the things we like, and the evil one in charge of the opposite things we don't like. There was a God of light and a God of darkness. There was a God of spirit and a God of flesh. There was a God of freedom and there was a God of slavery. There was a God of life and a God of death. So far so good, right? A pretty believable system that accounts for the world as we see it and the human person as we observe him, full of some good things and other evil things and in a cosmic struggle with each other. But here's how Augustine figured out the system was false. Run through the attributes of the good God. God of light, life, freedom, spirit. And then run through the attributes of the bad God. God of darkness, God of death, slavery and flesh. So it seems like these two gods are complete opposites. But they can't be, because for that to be true, for one God to exist, the other could not exist. But the good God must exist. His existence is necessary to explain the existence of good things. Even the Manichees acknowledged there were good things. The bad God must exist also. He would exist alongside the good God. So wait, the two gods really aren't opposite at all? So here's the question. Is existence a good property or a bad one? If we say existence is bad, then how could it be that a purely good God exists? If existence were evil, the purely good God could not possess that property. If we say existence is good, however, we are onto something. It allows us to see that the good God exists and is pure goodness. But what about the bad God? He exists too, and so he has some goodness in him as well. He cannot be purely evil because he has the good property of existence. He is merely less good than the good God. With help from studying the writings of Plato, Augustine reasoned that we really do not have good things and evil things in the world. We really have the best thing, which is the good God himself, who is pure goodness. And we have things that are lesser goodnesses light, life, freedom, spirit, and yes, even the bad God is a little bit good insofar as he exists. So what is evil then? It cannot be something created at all. It cannot be a created thing because all things that exist are good insofar as they exist. Evil is not a thing, strictly speaking. But where did the evil God get his goodness? because even that evil God must have some goodness in him insofar as he exists. The goodness that the evil God has must be caused ultimately by the good God who is the author of all goodness. The good God must have created the bad God. In fact, the bad God is not really a God at all. He is a created being after all. So where does his evil come from? It is not a thing that the good God created, since the good God can only create good things. It is not a thing that the evil God created, since the evil is not a thing that can be created. Evil occurs when we remove the goodness a thing is supposed to have. Evil is a lack, it is a privation. It is something empty that ought to be filled with goodness, but is not. The evil God, therefore, being good in his existence, must be evil in that he lacks some goodness that he should have. So, good and evil are not truly opposites. Evil is a privation. It is not a thing. 
Much like darkness is not a thing, it's what you have left when you remove light. Much like cold is not a thing, cold is what you get when you take away the heat. Evil is what occurs when you remove some of the goodness a thing ought to have. But you can't possibly remove all the goodness of something to get pure evil. Why? Because if you take all the goodness away from something, it means that the thing ceases to exist entirely. So that's why the dualistic system of the Manichaeans completely falls apart. It failed to see that all things have at least some goodness insofar as they exist. The Manichaean system's great supposed strength was its ability to explain the problem of evil. St. Augustine figured out its fatal weakness was that it could not really explain the problem of good. Thank you.